So this is the, uh, or what will be the earth cable for the batteries themselves. So I'm just going to push that down out of the way. Right, so I've had a quick wardrobe change. I'm going to put a jumper on because it's going to be a bit cold in this garage. And uh, now I'm going to look at uh, doing a little bit of wiring up to these connections here. So rather than using a uh, twin and earth type style cable, I'm actually going to use these single cables, which are uh, actually, I think, seven cores in these, the two and a half millimeters um, in diameter. And the benefit of these is that they're a lot more flexible than. Uh, twin and earth, so particularly getting it through this sort of conduit and the tubes and looping it all around here, it's just gonna make it a lot easier to, uh, to wire up. Also need to make sure I leave, leave some slack on the back of these cables as well to, uh, so I'm gonna slide the uh, trunking, or the, sorry, the conduit on and off. Very good little wire strippers these are. So because these cables are uh, multi-cord, I'm actually going to put some ferrules on the end of the uh, connections. So they simply slide over the end. And these the unusual crimping tool is used, which sort of crops and squashes it into like a uh, square shape actually and that's that and that's ready to go into those all the connections i'm doing here will obviously need to be double checked by uh, a qualified electrician when I get it all commissioned and signed off. Um, I'm purely just running the, the cables through now for, for this video, but obviously I, I do aim that uh, to do it right and uh, make sure that it all, all complies with whatever regulations are in place currently. And now we can repeat the uh, same process. Over there somewhere. So I can trim that back in. Um, again, I can chuck that one a bit shorter. This isn't going to make the most riveting video watching someone screw a faceplate on wall, but uh, you know, there might be some people in. 
different countries who are interested in this sort of stuff. So the earth cable needs to go all the way back up to these earth terminals up here. Um, I don't need to break it out in here because I'm not breaking the, the earth as it goes through. Um, and then the uh, blue and brown can terminate in here. So again, I'm going to leave some slack on these cables because I'm expecting it to be a, a bit difficult to get them out otherwise. Fit them in as we go along. So the blue and brown can be cut off here. And then the earth is the longer one. and we can get a ferrule on the end of that one. Now I will drop that in there, just keep it out of the way. Right, so I also need a, uh, a second earth connection to come down from the earth connection here, all the way down again and back up to the back of the inverter. Um, but this one will need a screw, screw lug on it, a um, ring lug on it, sorry. So this um, earth cable actually needs to be attached to the metal frame of the inverter. And to do this, it needs a uh, crimped eyelet. There's a uh, hex Allen key sort of bolt. It screws into the heatsink. Very difficult to show this on camera. So, excuse the back of my head. Now the fun bit, I should be able to slide this back on. He says. <laughs> So let's uh, add some more ferrules onto some cable. They just push on, quite a nice snug fit, and then you clip them on using that. And they uh, good tight connection once they're on there. Just got to make sure you cut the cable to the right length, just so it gets out. So you can just about see the, the uh, end of it. Perfect. Just going to unscrew those a little bit. These are just three three terminals. It doesn't matter uh, which one's going which, as long as you match them up on the out output side of it as well. 
Um, I'll use the uh, two end ones just to keep the separation. I'm not going to over tighten them at the moment. So the brown goes on that end just to match up with the other end. And the blue. Now this is always a tricky thing, just to clip that down. There's a little lever. Ah, there we go. Off camera, I've uh, drilled this uh, 25 millimeter hole and uh, put some uh, conduit through, through it as well. So that actually goes into the cavity um, in the floorboards in my house. So inside the house, I've had to uh, lift a few of the floorboards up to uh, route the cables over towards the consumer unit. Luckily, about uh, 10 years ago, I had a new uh, gas boiler fitted and that mean, meant that a lot of the floorboards had to be lifted up at the same time, so a lot of them have already been cut for me. So that makes routing cables relatively easy, although it's, um, I've still got to lift carpets and uh, floorboards up. I didn't video all, all of that, um, you know, it's, it's just chopping up floorboards ultimately um, and, and pushing cables through. So I've got a four millimeter squared uh, twin and earth cable um, and also two category five ethernet cables. Uh, so those are going to be uh, going to be running through for the uh, CT clamps around the power and the uh, solar cables for uh, energy monitoring. So now I'm going to run some conduit uh, from here uh, down to the consu consumer unit that we're fitting for this uh, battery install. So this is the uh, consumer unit, or as it uh, currently stands, covered in brick dust from all the holes I've had to drill. Uh, we've got the earth connections that, that, that uh, I've previously fitted, which we've already, already seen on uh, video. Um, these are the uh, main power uh, going into a 20 amp per breaker. Um, and then this is a combined um, RCD and a main, main double pole isolator switch as well. So that 4 mil cable will basically run, in, run into, into here and the, the earth bar and then provide um, power for uh, these two fuses here. Uh, the 10 amp won't, won't actually be used at the moment. I've uh, pre-cut and uh, shaped the uh, conduit and uh, cut the holes in, in the backing plate so I can run the cables through. Such short uh, conduit lengths, so I'm not going to bother gluing them together. They're a pretty tight push fit, and uh, the screw to the wall as well. As you can tell, I've pre drilled all these holes because you guys have probably had enough of me making my wall look like Swiss cheese. These are very difficult to screw things into. It holds slightly too small, but uh, there we go. So with this particular piece of conduit, I'm going to run the uh, CT clamps through. This will physically keep them separate from the uh, power cables, so just avoid any interference. But because they're um, the current uh, related, it shouldn't really cause any any problems. But better to be safe than sorry. Um, the um, other side of this is that there isn't actually much space left in um, these um, other conduits that I've already put it put in here. So uh, keeping them separate just allows me to do that. Run those through as well. 
Okay, so now I'm going to feed the cables through the uh, conduit. Um, I'll start with the uh, CT clumps first of all. And the idea with these is that they'll then run onto the right hand side. So I'm just going to pull them through to this junction bit first. Just make it a bit easier. So now I'm going to push the uh, four mil twin and earth down. That was easier than I expected it to be. So now we can uh, screw on the covers. So I'm not going to connect up that 4mm twin and earth, that's the job for the electrician to do. Um, but for now I can pop the, pop the cover back on the top, you didn't catch any of the cables. So the observant of you may have noticed that um, I've done some really simple uh, colour coding on these cables just to mark them as one or two and just using some red in, in, uh, electrical tape. Uh, it's a very easy way of just marking um, cables without having to write on them or you know, risk, risk uh, things coming off later, later on. Um, at the moment it doesn't matter which cable does, does what. Um, they're both as I mentioned for the um, CT clamps. So I've got um, two small cable glands here. which we can use to feed the uh, CT comp cables through. Fantastic, so I shall put in no particular order, number one through there. And I'll just pull them back a bit to uh, do some slack. So I've taken these category five cables and I've inside those there's uh, four pairs of uh, cores uh, and they're all colour coded and what I've done is taken the uh, solid colours and twisted them all together and then the uh, stripy colours and uh, twisted all those together just, just to end up with two connections. And I've done that on both cables and all, all this is going to do is basically just reduce any, any chance of interference um, on those cables. And on this particular inverter there's a, a really simple screw cut terminal So with the CT clamps installed, all that's really remaining now is to get the electrician round to connect up the mains and get all this slot powered up. We've obviously got to connect the battery as well, but that's for, that's for a separate video. If you're enjoying this series, please subscribe, like this video, and also drop me a comment on uh, how you think I'm doing so far. See you soon.